Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, everyone. We are your hosts, Mary and Vince Kramer. Welcome to Waking Up, where we share discussions, insights, and information about science, spirituality, and living a life of your design. Welcome, everyone. We are so happy to be here with you today to share our insight and perspective on the message we receive from the Roundtable Channeling on our monthly free community channeling. For those of you that aren't familiar, Vince channels a group of energies that refer to themselves as the round table because these higher frequencies join us as equals to help us live life in a way that fulfills our reason for being on earth. This channeling happens on the third Monday of every month at 6.30 Mounted Time. I always think it's the best channeling, but I always think every channeling I'm listening to is the best. I listen to them over and over because there's so much packed into what they share with us. Also, the message in each channeling seems to expand as we become more aware. So Vince, I thought it'd be fun if you and I talked about what the round table bring. And before we start, just hopefully you'll uh, check in. How do you feel about the channeling? What's it? What was it like for you to be a part of that one in February? Well, I absolutely think it's amazing. First of all, there was such a synchronicity in, in what we shared the week before in our podcast about promptings and messages. And I I was, I guess I was going to say I was amazed, but I'm never amazed by the roundtable on, on what they bring in and what they share. And it was in such alignment with the, the week before, I I was just so happy that they were able to really take that information a little bit further. And it was an exciting group of people. So um, as you know, I don't remember much of what happens during the channelings, but as I read back through the transcripts, uh, it was a very powerful night for everyone. And and I loved what the roundtable shared in the way that they did. I agree with you. One of the things that I know they wanted to expand on as they've been listening in, as people have read our book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice, that people have read our story and they've said, well, I haven't had a situation where, you know, people have seen the little blonde girl in my aura, or I haven't had a situation where someone um, saw the little boy you know, there, there's so many stories in that book and they really wanted to impress upon everyone that guidance is calling on them right now. And this is a time that we are needed to wake up. And I know that because so much of what they say is embedded in your cells, what extra do you remember from that night that you'd like to share about how they shared for all of humanity that this is their wake-up call? That channeling was, hey, this is your red-haired little boy. This is your blonde-haired, blue-eyed little girl. Well, the one thing I I don't think people realize, because it's really not addressed in a very strong way in the book, is that there were a lot of wake-up calls for me along the way. A lot of what we call conscious ones, where I knew that there was something missing. I knew that I was supposed to be doing something different. You know, the story of my grandmother was in there. So one thing I think that people don't look at is I had so many wake-up calls that I didn't pay attention to, small ones here and there. And and I know next in a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing podcasts strictly on wake-up calls. But I, I want people to know that I didn't listen to a lot of that information. So there there might be a lot of stuff that you're missing because you just don't know where to look for it or you don't trust it 
or you're just too darn busy to realize that those messages are there. Then the other thing that I wanted to share was the way that I read the transcript is what they were saying is there's so many of you that, that are saying, well, I wish the angels told me that they've been waiting for me. And boy, they did, didn't they? They came they right did. and said, hey, listen, <laughs> this, this, this message is for you. It's, it's your time. We have been waiting for you. If you're on this call at that moment, or you listen to this recording, it's your time. We're telling you, we're waiting for you. Exactly. I think, I think it's so important. You made that point. Being on that call was a wake up call. For sure. I, I think every single one of them are Mary, to be, be honest with you in the questions that people ask, you know, they're looking for that guidance. They're looking for that direction. And it's always wake up, wake up, wake up, really, uh, for everything that they're sharing. But I, I can't, for, for those of you who are listening to this podcast right now, the roundtable told people, we are waiting for you to wake up. We're waiting to bring you the guidance to help you on your path. It, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> I love that. That's so true. You mentioned uh, people's questions. So I thought it'd be fun if we went over a couple of the questions that night. One of them was someone who has taken our classes and is involved with us in the programs that we offer, and which also means they get to speak with the roundtable every quarter as well. She asked a really good question. And her question was, what does it mean to be in alignment. And I was actually really happy they that she asked that because it gave me some more insight into uh, being in alignment and what that means. And they actually, because you know, they're always coaching, they gave several questions for all of us to ask ourselves. So before we go into, you know, the round table and, and what they said about being in alignment and sharing with our listeners, those questions, how do you feel about being in alignment? Do you think that you're just automatically in alignment with your true self, or do you consciously align yourself every day? Well, that's a very interesting question because the answer to both of the things that you ask, I think is yes. Uh, I, I think we're all in alignment with our true selves. I just don't think we know what that is, so we don't know what it looks like. And because of that, you know, we we miss the cues to take us on our path. But also, I think we've spent so much time uh, learning what's expected of us and what other people want to see from us or see in us that we've become really automatic with that. We, uh, you know, as a pilot, I love to say we're operating on autopilot. The masks automatically show up, the shadows rear their ugly heads, the mirrors and projections are there for us. And, and I think we, we just don't realize that if we just surrendered, that we would be in alignment with who we are. And I'm the same way. So yes, I try every day to align myself to who I am. And, you know, it's a, it's a journey, everyone. Don't expect to be able to do it right away. And don't expect for the people around you to accept even when you do, because we've all been programmed. We've all been trained really to accept how life is and how other people show up in their lives. And it, it's truly Mary staying in that conscious mind and wanting to be in alignment and making sure our thoughts are in alignment. And I think that's what you bring so amazingly to Imagine Miracles is what you just said. You have figured out and you're so patient and loving in your coaching and your teaching to really help people stay in that conscious moment and learn how to be conscious, learn how to stay conscious, learn when they're not conscious, like you said, you know, surrendering to it, because when we're not in the surrender, and that's probably a whole different topic, but when we're resisting, let's say, we're not in the present moment, we're not in the conscious mind. 
So I just wanted to, you know, give you a shout out for how much I think you bring to humanity with your talents and gifts. So I wanted to move on to the round table. They shared similarly to you about being in alignment with a little different twist. And you could say the twist is as we expand, what is, what's the further expansion to be focused on and what they said is that they share for the group that your thoughts, your actions, your feelings, your attitude, all have to be in alignment with who you are and why you're here on this earth. They have to be in alignment so you can create the circumstances. So I think that's just what you're saying, Vince, but it's also, you know, an expansion on what you're saying. Well, exactly. And we've, We've shared that in a couple of talks that we've given also, uh, maybe not in those exact words, but but pretty close. When you don't know who you are and you don't align to that energy, there's chaos created because there's a difference in vibrations, a difference in frequencies. And that chaos is not just felt by those people that are in contact with you. But if you want to look at it energetically, it creates some chaos in the universe. The universe doesn't know, you know, are you truly being who you are or do you want to be something else? And how can the universe support us if there's that difference, that confusion? So, yeah, I, I love what they said there. If we align our actions, we align our message we align our thoughts and feelings with who we are, but not just that, then also do we take our thoughts and feelings and align it with what we want to create in the world? That's what really opens the door to the magnificence of who we are as creators. Exactly. And, and I want to add to that, that they also said that being in alignment with your, with your true self puts you in a position where you're making the most difference in other people's lives. When you're in alignment with yourself, then you are aligned to that difference. But like we've been saying, everything you're saying, everything the round table has been saying, it all has to be in alignment. So that brings me to the questions. And those of you that are listening, you know, maybe you could come back and write these down, but if you're not in a place to write these down, just think about the answer, the first answer that pops in your mind. The first one they said was, do you have the number of calls that you want in your business? Yes or no? Are you surrounded with the community that you want? Yes or no? Are you living in a place of abundance where you know that all your needs are met? Yes or no? Are you continuing to grow and expand? Yes or no? And they said, if the answers to all of these are yes, then you're in alignment. Most of the people, Vince, I know you couldn't see them, but most of the people on the call were shaking their head no. They couldn't say yes to all of those questions. And they said, if you're coming up short on what you want to attract into your life, then you're not in alignment. It was very clarifying. And they definitely were pointing out to us that we know where we want to be. We understand what it would look like if we put our attention on it, what it would look like for us to create that life that we're looking for. Unfortunately, we kind of cut ourselves short in really putting out there what we do want and, and how we want it to show up in our lives. And then just to notice, if your energy is aligned with who you are and what you want, you're going to be attracting those things into your life. And in attracting them into your life is when you're going to realize, ah, I am bringing those numbers of calls in if you've got a business, or I am aligning with the relationship that I want in my life or the health that I want to experience. So I, I think those questions are very important. 
all of us can come up with our own questions to ask ourselves. It's just making sure that you are also in that conscious mind enough to catch the thoughts when you're outside of it or catch the feelings when you're outside of being in alignment. You mentioned being in alignment with what you want. Just as a side note, one of the things we talk about with the people in our programs all the time is the really cool thing to know is your higher self knows what you want. So there's a little side work everyone could do. What we call it, Imagine Miracles, your true self is your quintessence. And the other thing that we uncover with you, because you have all the answers, is your divine intent. And they were saying, the roundtable was saying that the most important thing is to align with your quintessence and to align with your divine intent. If you're already, and they said this, most of you are already in alignment with what you're good at and enjoy doing. You're already in alignment with your gifts and talents, but you have to be willing to choose to use them in everything you do. Yes. And like you said, being in alignment with your divine intent, we, we're truly here to make that difference. We're, we're truly here to share with the world uh, a difference that will change, not just for one person or the 20 people that you're working with in your business or the 30 people in your family that you're sharing with. We're here to truly make a difference for all the world. And in a, when we're in alignment with that, that's what really gives us the power because we can't help but be that magnificent creator at that point. When we're living the reason that we're here, that's where our, we're truly empowered. Absolutely. And I think a lot of us misunderstand why we are here. And we think that our how, how we do things, our gifts, our talents is our why. And they were very emphatic about, no, you really must uncover your why. You are living your how, but uncovering your why is so critical. And that takes us into the second question that came up. This was from a woman on the call who is planning an event in, in the, probably I think at the end of spring. And she's quite... Um, confident and she shines out all over yet her numbers aren't where she wants them to be yet. So even though she is doing her work, uh, you know, she's out there being of service and she's shining her light and she's attracting people. She wants to be more in service. And that was her question. How can I do that? And their answer was to come fully from your end, meaning fully from knowing who you are, your quintessence and uncovering your divine intent, your mission. If you believe that you're shining out that energy, you are. But if there's doubt, it's the belief that you may have underneath that beautiful shining out that she has that creates the difference and why there aren't as many people as she wants coming, clamoring to hear what she has to share. I think one of the things that's most important for all of us is to realize we need to find that difference that we're meant to make. Because when we're in alignment, back to that first question, when we're in alignment with the difference that we're meant to make, that energy is going to attract those people that are looking for that difference. And for this individual that uh, shared who she was and where she's at and, and answered the questions of the round table of, you know, what, what difference are you making in the world? Uh, she shared really what we've been taught over the years of what purpose is. I remember an exercise that I did with a, a, a very excellent coach. And that exercise was name two things that you really enjoy doing and name how you wanted to change people's lives 
And if you put that together, it's your purpose. So I, I can't remember exactly um, what I put together, but I had this plaque in my office and, and as a reminder of my purpose. And it was teaching and traveling. And I, I don't remember what I wrote down to as the difference that I wanted to make for people. That's what the round table said the other night is your what it's, it's your what of what you have to offer in the world. It's your gifts and talents, your unique process and how it helps people or the people that you want to serve. But they also said that what turns out to be your how to live that difference that you want to make, your divine intent. And we'll do a whole podcast on that because it's so important. But that's what they were saying the other night. If you, if you uncover what difference you're here to make and you put that energy out into the world, those are the people you're going to attract and your event will be full or as full as it can be of those people who are ready for that difference. And then when you bring them in to work with you through your coaching programs or, or your training programs or, or just interacting with them in whatever business or however you want to live your life, then you're using your talents and gifts. You're using how you want to make a difference in their lives, not necessarily a difference in the universe, the difference in the world. That's the how of making that difference. Great clarification. I wanted to add that they also talked about, because most of us are interesting in marketing and how we use our words to attract business to us that we were just talking about with the events. And is that, Lots of times we use words from our what or how, as you just explained. And people, of course, they resonate with those words, but because they're, we are all multidimensional, they were sharing that when you use the words that are from the difference you're going to make, the difference you're here to make, that's the A+. Plus. That's those words that you uncover when you're finding your divine intent, when you're finding your quintessence and you get those words nailed down and you use those in your marketing material, that's when your big lighthouse of light of you is shining out the brightest. And that's where the electromagnetic attraction happens with the people that are looking for you to be moved and supported into the difference that they're here to make. I think that's a, exactly uh, what they were sharing in, in a way that everybody can understand it. Your reason for being here, the difference that you're meant to make, is the underlying desire, is the underlying want for the people that are truly looking for you, the, the people that are to going back to the, the word aligned with you. And once you start sharing from that place, it's a feeling, it's a resonance and not just a mental, oh yes, I want to lose weight or I want to market my business better or I want to have more friends or I want to have a lasting, loving relationship. It, it's that that's a lot of the mental. And when you start sharing the difference that you're meant to make, it, it moves to the heart and the heart's called to it. it you're, you're truly aligning with the, uh, the emotion of, of what you're looking for in your life. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we talk about wake up calls all the time. And everybody's like, "Ugh, I don't want a wake up call. Ugh, I've already had so many that we almost become numb to them. You mentioned that earlier. So our, our next question, we had several questions that night, but we're only going to talk about a few of them today. 
But the next one was from someone also. Now she has been with us for several years. So she's pretty, let's say, educated in wake up calls and moments of choice, but still not too happy when one rolls around. And so she came on and she wanted to know with the round table, why, you know, what, what have I done? And I felt such compassion for her and just, you know, wanted to, I wanted to support her, but I knew they would, and they did. And one of the ways that they went about this is to define a wake up. So they defined a wake up in this case as an opportunity to look at life and decide if you want to live it differently. And all of us that were on the call, we could just see her breathe a sigh of relief. It was like, that felt really good to me. There's this circumstances happening in my life. And, you know, am I a failure? What did I do wrong now? And they were saying, no, it's really all about vibration. And it's about choices. And it's about co-creation. And how do you want to live your life differently? How do you want to live differently in a higher vibration? And I want you to comment on this. And then when I come back, uh, they gave us some really great coaching questions. Well, the interesting part of that is we always ask ourselves, why do bad things happen to good people? It's really a message. It's really a prompting for you to align again. This is definitely the, the word of the podcast, to align with who you are and to align with why you're here. You're here to do that. And it's really about remembering those things and then stepping into it. And I think that what happens is, especially once you know who you are and why you're here, and you choose not to be that, remember, not choosing is a choice. And I think I love that statement because this person that you're talking about didn't necessarily choose not to follow their divine intent. She just chose not to choose. Powerful. Because of that, we're going to go to what our equilibrium state is, and that's who we are in the moment. There does need to be a transformation for you to step into that space. So it's really not bad things happening to good people. It's things happening that are created, co-created by that non-physical part of you, your higher self. So you make the choice to step into who you are, because that's why you came to earth, to live that divine intent, to be who you are. And it's doing everything in its power to get you through your free will to choose to be that person. Absolutely. So as promised, here are some of the questions that the roundtable shared that you as our listeners can think about and journal. Do you feel good in this moment? Are you in your happiest expression of you right now? Are you in the healthiest expression of you right now? And are you in the most content expression of yourself right now? Basically, would you agree, Vince, that if you're feeling not really on most of those questions, more than likely you are at a point where you do need an opportunity to look at life differently and make a decision. And can you choose? Can you choose in that moment to say, ah, the answers were no or or maybe not. Maybe. So it might be a good idea to, okay, well, what would that expression be? And how do I want to start living it? Because now you're taking away the need for that wake up call. And I think the operative word in every one of those statements was most. 
because we have a tendency to believe that, oh, I, I found this short-term fix. I found this short-term thing that, okay, I'm happy, but it's, it's reaching out to the outside to make you happy, or it's reaching out to a relationship to, to be in that happy space. And is that really the most happy expression of you? Is, are you truly living from a place of, ah, this is the most. It's coming from the inside. I'm healthier. I'm happier. I know that I'm going in the right direction. And then those wake-up calls, at least at that level, aren't going to come. But there will be messages and promptings for us to listen to. But when you start aligning to who you are, it's easier for you to accept and see those messages that are coming in. I think that's really great advice. The other thing that they mentioned to this person was, it's time to stop covering up. And that's just another way of saying what you just said. It is time. They're calling out to us. We're calling out to people. We're shining our light out. We're asking people to stop covering up their light, to stop hiding from the world. It's time to let beliefs of the past hold you back. It's time to let the beliefs of the past not hold you back. It's time to let go of those and step truly into who you are. They kept saying that over and over through all the questions. And they reminded everyone on the call that we have everything we need and it's just time to stop hiding from it. They did go into a little bit more, which might be interesting for some people, um, suggesting that we really move out of our head and move into our heart. The heart is the decision maker. It's the one that's connected and knows what you're here to do. And I'll add what you want and how best to do it. Now your brain is there to help you create in this earthly world, this 3D environment. Your head is the masculine and your heart is the feminine, the creator that puts the erector set together. When your heart, the feminine has said, hey, this is the direction, this is the creation, let's build it. Mary, believe it or not, we're getting close to the end of our time and we definitely need to put that discussion right there on a list of, of podcasts to come because it's so important to understand the, the heart and, and brain and how they come together and the masculine and the feminine and how that has to come together in each one of us. So I can't wait to share that on a future podcast. Yes. And I just want to remind everyone that you too can join these calls the third Monday of every month at 6.30 p.m. Mountain. We don't hand out the Q&A part of the recordings. So you do have to attend to get that information. But on our YouTube channel, you will find the intro and the outro of the TRT, which is always full of education and timely for the moment that we are in when the call is happening. Yeah, I just want to share that that YouTube channel is Imagine Miracles, so it's pretty easy to find. Absolutely. So like you said, we're at the end of our time, and we hope we have encouraged you to see how you are being supported in being all you can be. If you want to learn more about Imagine Miracles and other topics about living your unique purpose, please go to imaginemiracles.com. And as always, you can get our best-selling book, Awakening Through Moments of Choice, at amazon.com. Yes, we want to uh, remind you, the guides said that they are waiting for you to wake up to who you are. And we are here to help you on that journey to find who you are, why you're here, and then bring it fully to the world because the world truly needs you. Until we come together again in another episode, we want to wish each and every one of you a miracle day. 
You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to themiracleyou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's themiracleyou.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.